Hi, listeners. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to let you know that this episode is sponsored by The Draw Shop, and we've got something exciting for you. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been asked what you do? We all get asked this, right? Have you then answered and then got the response of totally glazed over eyes or just the look of someone politely smiling but definitely not caring, it sucks. I know. I've totally been there on both sides, actually. That's why my team and I at The Draw Shop now offer a service to help you perfect your elevator pitch so that people immediately understand how you can make their life better and so that you can use this anywhere in your marketing. It's the single statement that compels your prospects to take action right away. Here's what happens. You meet with an expert copywriter on our team to define the problem you solve, how you solve it, and the transformation your customers experience after working with you. From there, we'll turn that into a short and sweet elevator pitch just for you and create a compelling one-page visual story to help the world better understand your business and how you can help them. For a special limited time offer, we are offering you this service for one third the usual price valued at $1,500. Yep, 70% off. Again, this will only be available for a limited time, and we've already seen incredible results with our clients changing this one single statement. So to get your word perfect pitch today, head to www.thedrawshop.com forward slash elevator pitch now. That's www.thedrawshop.com forward slash elevator pitch. Okay, let's get into today's episode. You can grow organically. It's a lot slower. There's this shame or stigma that comes with borrowing money to accelerate your growth. But I think that comes from like borrowing money to pay for a car or something else. Like to me, it's a symptom of success. If you have the ability to to sell more, if you produce more, look at what your margins are. And if the cost of financing that inventory falls within a comfortable place with your margins and you're going to make more money, then why not do that? What if you could earn money by purchasing inventory for scaling brands? What if you could purchase inventory for a brand that is totally growing and doing amazing things, and then you could earn money after purchasing that inventory? It's like an investment, right? Well, today I'm talking to David Koifman, who is the VP of Business Development at Kick Further, which is precisely what they do. It's like this total retail revolution, and you can either go there and have people invest in your brand and get funded and capitalized so that you can continue to scale, or you could be the one that invests so that you could make money off of that inventory that's being sold. It's pretty dang cool, and it's called Kick Further. We're going to talk about it today, and even more importantly, we're going to talk about how to scale a retail business, how to create more efficiencies in your e-commerce business, and also how to get funding when the bank just isn't working with you. So those are the things we're talking about today. David's pretty awesome. He's wicked smart. He works directly with hundreds of growing product brands to understand their needs and structure funding co-ops. That's what these are. They're co-ops. He also builds strategic partnerships that enable efficient acquisition channels, and he addresses the challenges faced by the growing CPG businesses. David's really, really smart, and I I was so kind of like floored by this whole model of, of business and I can tell that it's such an exciting role to be in, to be able to be a part of these brands' journeys as they grow. So this episode is really for you if you are interested in being one of those people to invest and find another way to earn money and be a part of these brands. It's also for you if you're on the other side and you actually have a product something that you can touch and and hold. This isn't just a a digital, like an online product or information. This is like an actual physical product that you sell and you are trying to scale. What it's such a cool way. You're going to hear so much more about it during this interview, but 
I really love, I really love technology. I really love innovation. And this is just one of those things that helps people on both sides. So take a listen. Again, all information will be in the show notes as always. David, welcome to the show. And thank you so much for being here with me today. Hey, Summer. Thanks for having me. We've got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Really cool stuff. It's going to be a little bit different than, here's the thing. We've got a lot of listeners that have products or they have retail stores, or they've, they've got some type of business where they're selling physical products. In my business, I don't, you know, we, we are a service and we deliver something, but it's something that is not a product that is being, you know, shipped to them. So, but we have a lot of listeners that do. So this is going to be really great for, for them. And I'm really excited because you've got some things like burning questions. I think that you can help answer and some really great strategies for them. But before we go into that, I'd love if you could share how you got into this type of expertise in business development and how, you know, what is it that you love about it? Why is it important to you? Sure. So I've been with Kick Further about two and a half years now, and I come from a financial technology background. I was in a different startup for four years previous to that. And to me, the exciting thing is building a product that solves a problem for business owners and turning that into a successful organization. So when I came in, it wasn't about you know what we do, specifically the problem that we're solving for business owners. It was more the opportunity to come in at a ground level and help build the sales side of the organization. And as I learned what we're doing, you know, I developed a pretty deep knowledge of supply chain and how consumer goods production and sales happens in these times. And it's been really interesting to see that we can help grow consumer goods brands really quickly, faster than they'd be able to grow otherwise. So I've really become passionate about what we do from a funding perspective and financing inventory. That's probably a big question that I'm just going to go right into because when people do have a product that they really believe in and they're they're going to their bank and they're like, hey, I need some funding here to, to get this going. Even if they have something that's, that you know looks to be really promising, people are having a tough time with their traditional business loans with their bank. How are ways that they can go around that and yeah. actually get the funding that they need? So, so business loans from a bank and line of credit from a bank is a really great way to finance your business. It's low cost. However, banks are generally pretty tentative when offering large lines of credit or large loans to early stage businesses. And what, what we experience the most is somebody who is growing really fast. They made something, maybe they had a successful Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign, or maybe they just started selling through Facebook or Instagram ads. And they discovered that there's a massive demand for their product. So what they need to do is make more product to be able to keep up with that demand. And what happens with that really high level of growth is that a bank will look at them and say, hey, you guys have been in business for what, six months, a year, you've done a million, two million in sales. That's really impressive, but come back to us in three to four years, and then we'll be able to give you what you're looking for. Right now, maybe we can offer you five or 10K, right? So we have a unique way of looking at these businesses and the deals that we structure are focused solely on their inventory production and their ability to sell that inventory. So we take a different perspective and risk these businesses differently in order to enable us to offer them a program to fund their production. So a typical use case is somebody is like, hey, I've sold these like crazy. I need to place another order with my supplier, buy raw materials to produce what I'm producing. I need this much money. So we will vet the company, structure a deal, put it up, on our website, kickfurther.com, and then a community of backers that already exists. Over 10,000 people are subscribed to these emails, will come to the website, see the deal, and decide if they're going to participate. They'll earn a profit that the business offers them. So the business will raise these funds, it'll go to produce their inventory, and then their payback will be tied to the sales of that exact inventory. So we're directly addressing a very common cash flow pinch that business owners experience. Mm-hmm. Their demand is rising and they need to continue producing more and more to keep up to 
with that. That's so cool. It's so cool. Now, there's there's a lot of people that will say, I, I never want to have to borrow money or, or anything. What are your thoughts on that in terms of if you're really wanting to scale your business, can you do it without you know borrowing any money or without getting funding? You absolutely can. You can grow organically. It's a lot slower. Mm-hmm. So what I would say, and, and I talk to those people pretty frequently, there's, there's this shame or stigma that comes with borrowing money to accelerate your growth. But I think that comes from like, you know, borrowing money to pay for a car or something else. Like to me, it's a symptom of success. If you have the ability to, to sell more, if you produce more, look at what your margins are. And if the cost of financing that inventory falls within a comfortable place with your margins and you're going to make more money, then why not do that? Right. What are some strategies that you can share for scaling if you are one? I mean, that's that's kind of the dream, right? As I want to scale this as, as quickly as possible. What are some strategies that you help with? So we're focused on, you know, making sure that the business has a sound supply chain and sound logistics in order to fulfill the inventory that they receive, partially self-fulfilling because we want our deals to be successful, but partially because we have an expertise in that and that's where our diligence comes from. My advice is, you know, once you identify that you have a product that sells really well, make sure the fun- fundamentals are in place. Make sure that you're looking at everything at once because you don't want to get to a point where, you know, your business is scaling so rapidly and you're let's say fulfilling orders out of your garage and then you reach a limit and all of a sudden you have to scramble to to find a third party fulfillment and logistics center you want to be ahead of that and same with funding you know if if things are going like really really fast and, and accelerating and you're selling more and more and then all of a sudden you realize my next order is going to cost me you know 300,000 which is three times what I paid for the last order, and I don't have that money available, you're going to be missing out on a ton of opportunity if you haven't done your diligence and prepared for that kind of thing. Right. Totally. You know, I love the podcast, How I Built This. And that's probably something that I hear a lot of in a lot of these big brands and products that we know today, that's been a problem and things that where they almost lost everything because those efficiencies weren't in place beforehand. So what, what is some advice that you have in terms of creating more efficiencies when you have a business like this? What are the things that you should be thinking about before you go all in, in trying to scale? You know, I don't, I don't want to speak for other types of solutions that are not inventory financing. I think from, from our standpoint, it's making sure that you're well capitalized and looking at all the options, doing your research. I don't tell anybody that we're the only solution. I think we're part of a a larger solution. You know, a lot of our clients have equity investors. A lot of them have a line of credit from a bank. It's, It's finding different pieces for the puzzle. So make sure that you have everything organized, that you do your research, that you don't settle for some sort of product that puts you in a really tight position with really high rates. I'll be the first to say that a bank line of credit is going to be your cheapest source of capital. So explore that first, right? It's 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 just knowing the the opportunities out there and being prepared for when you need the funding. Let's talk about partnerships. And I this is I think is so so important at any phase of of your business, but especially in that in that beginning phase. I know that this is something that you help with in terms of building strategic partnerships that that can really help businesses get get noticed, get seen. How do you help with that? And how would somebody go about doing that? Like, how do, how do they reach out and go, I think this person would be a great person to partner with, but how do I get them to listen to me? So we do a lot of that ourselves in, in terms of business development. What we look for in partnerships is somebody who's going to benefit from you providing your service to their customer. So like Kick Further will partner with fulfillment centers. These are businesses that are warehousing product for customers and then shipping it when orders come in. If that business has their clients receiving more capital, that means they have more inventory to warehouse and more inventory to ship out and directly impacts their revenue. So how are you going to help somebody else make more money by offering your service to them? And that's really the, the key to a successful partnership. People, A lot of people are really nice, but they're not doing this because they want to be nice to you. They're doing it because it helps on both sides. That is my 
recommendation is look for partners that are going to benefit from your products helping their clients. We always try to help our customers by referring them to our partners who could help them. So we have fulfillment centers that we partner with. We have marketing companies that we partner with. Also, we have a community of backers. When, when you come to kick further to do your inventory financing, you're not just talking to one banker. You're maybe talking to one of our account executives who's going to structure your deal and put it up on a platform. But then an email goes out to 10,000 people who are on that website because they're interested in making money and supporting a business like yours. So you have the attention of all these people that could potentially become customers of yours. They could buy your product. And we've seen mm-hmm. many times that these people are actually engaging off platform and doing investment deals. So really cool for us to connect people with high net worth individuals that are interested in, in supporting their business and have some sort of expertise to bring to the table. Maybe they have you know manufacturing experience or distribution experience with that particular product. This is not like a service that we're offering or selling. It's just a byproduct of the marketplace model. That's awesome. What are some stories that you can share with us where where you've seen a really great success? So we have a deal up right now for a company called Shinesty. They make irreverent clothing. It's crazy party clothes. They do like the football blazers. Recently, they got into boxer briefs with wild patterns on them. And these boxers have just taken off. So we started working with them, I would say three years ago. And I don't want to quote what their revenue was at the time, but it was a fraction of what it is now. So if you look at their deal that's up on the site now, they're almost at their goal of 320,000. They have 14 million in sales and they just launched this boxer line a year ago, which has skyrocketed to 4 million in sales. So what we're doing for them is funding container loads of boxers that they're selling primarily through e-commerce on a subscription model. And they're just hugely successful. A lot of their success, I believe, comes from their marketing approach. They have really unique content that they put together themselves. Looks homemade. It's hilarious. Just the way that they deliver content really, really grabs the attention of the end consumer that's a company that we've been engaged with for a long time. This is their fourth deal with us. And they're many times the size they were when they started. Wow. That's awesome. So you you mentioned marketing and I'm obsessed with marketing. I think I feel like it's like probably the most important thing. Have you seen that a lot? You know, you're talking about the marketing in this. Have you seen where somebody is probably getting properly funded? However, it didn't work out because of the lack of marketing. We see less of that because generally the client that we interact with has an opportunity to sell more and that's why they're coming to us to fund new production. But sure, we see sometimes people are making projections off of campaigns that they're just kicking off and have some initial successes from, and then they don't materialize to you know what their expectations were and they're stuck with a bunch of stuff that they thought was going to sell like crazy and ended up not selling like crazy mm-hmm. so that's when you know they, they have to get creative look at alternative ways to sell that inventory you know not everybody's just doing e-commerce some people are selling wholesale a lot of people you know go to trade shows and look for buyers for for distributors some people are on you know those those talk shows where They're advertising a product and people will call in to buy and get a special deal. So there's, you know, we we really cover a wide variety of different sales channels that businesses are tackling in order to to help with their growth. Um, Okay. On e-commerce. I mean, it's it's all across the board. And just to like really clarify, because I hear examples of, you know, the, the people that you've worked with, but who is this for and what is there kind of like a checklist? You know, if if this, then then we, you know check us out would be a great fit. And then at the same time, who is this not for? So it's for anybody who's either buying or manufacturing physical goods and then selling them. The only thing that we can't do, and you know, we tried a little bit of this in our early days, is working with the absolute earliest stage of idea. Our clients need to have experience with their supply chain and selling their product. It can't just be something that seems like it will sell. So they need to be able to produce it, sell it. And we look for a minimum of 150,000 in sales in the last 12 months. And our clients will range anywhere from there to upwards of 
15 million in the last 12 months. So there's there's a long period of time, a large portion of that small to medium-sized business growth where Kick Further can be extremely instrumental in, in helping take some of that load of capital need for the inventory aspect. Right. And so who this is not for is really that you're just starting out. That's that's a totally different, totally different game. Yeah, it's just, it's really high risk and it's not something that we want to expose the community to because for our marketplace to be effective, businesses have to be able to fund deals and the people funding those deals have to earn profits. Otherwise, they're not going to you know just give out money. The other thing that we unfortunately can't do is perishables. Anything that requires refrigerated transport or storage, the inventory is our collateral in these deals. So it needs... It needs to have value, even if it's not, you know, carefully taken care of. We also don't do, you know, guns, alcohol, tobacco, things that are regulated. Right. So it's kickfurther.com, correct? Yes. And if you go to market on the top left, you'll be able to see all the live deals, upcoming deals, and every deal we've ever funded. That's awesome. So cool. And how long have you guys been in business? So we've been at this for over five years. Nice. The last two years have been really tremendous growth years for us. It's been really cool to you know watch our company grow and and partner with so many great clients that we've taken or helped get to you know where they are now over the course of many many deals. And I think the the biggest testament to our success is that our customers do multiple deals. They come to us when they're looking for a solution and they come back after they pay off and, and do another deal with each subsequent production run. So it really shows that, you know, it's it's a valuable solution and it's cost effective. And because you're, you know, you're offering to a community that gets to know you, you can offer them lower rates as you're successful. So the price actually gets cheaper and cheaper for businesses as they complete deals. As they, as they build that credibility. I love that. It's so great. It's so awesome. And I think, you know, as we were talking about earlier, there is for some people that stigma of like, I don't want to have to borrow, but I think, you know, this is such a testimony, especially people coming back again and again to the success and how they're able to, to grow. I think it's just so, it's so awesome. And it's so, what an exciting, what an exciting position for you to get to see that, to see them at one level and then to see them quickly scale. Yeah, it's, re- it's really fun. You know, everybody who's who's starting these businesses is intelligent and hardworking and generally taking a pretty large risk to leave whatever source of income they had before to do this full time. So these are really interesting people that we're working with. At the same time, the people supporting these businesses are really interesting. And to be able to fund these deals and, and grow the business and continue funding them at, a, at such a rapid rate is really cool to see the loyalty that our, that our backers have as well. Yes, absolutely. Well, David, this is this is so awesome. I think this is such a great, amazing solution. I love that there's there's more solutions like this available, you know, in today's world where it used to just be you got to go to the bank and <laughs> either get it or you don't. This is just so so great and what an exciting place for you to be in. Is there anywhere else that I should send people to find out more information about you? Uh, anybody can reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn or email me, david at kickfurther.com. But we would love any of the listeners to, you know, if you're business owners, check us out for helping with funding. And if you're not business owners, we'd love to help you support businesses and and earn some returns. Uh, We are, based on our last report, users are earning 14% IRR on a portfolio level. And right now we're offering a 3% bonus for anybody that brings funds in from their bank account and participates in deals with those funds. So it's a, it's a pretty massive opportunity from both sides. That is so awesome. So cool. Super excited, exciting for anyone on either side to, to participate. We will make sure that we have the links to the website, your email address, and any other information in the show notes so that they can learn more. Thanks so much for having me, Summer. Pleasure chatting with you. You too. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you haven't already done so, would you do me a favor and go subscribe and review this podcast? My goal is to continue to deliver you content that will really move the revenue needle in your business and give you up-to-date content on anything else that can dramatically help your business. 
You can also find us at thedrawshop.com slash podcasts where you can comment on the podcast or contact us directly with any issues you'd like me to address. Thanks again. I really, really appreciate you listening and I'll see you next time.